Welcome back, everyone. <clears throat> of course, as you know by now, it's Kaiserreich, you, me, and Germany, and a little bit of lag. What else is new? But we have Bavaria's defeat. Schleicher's not been defeated, but Bavaria has. The Bundeswehr has gathered, and this decision is final. The chaos on the choice of the Bavarian government to nullify the decrees made under the Enabling Act was declared a violation to the duties of the federal state of the Empire. The representatives granted the Schleicher government the green light to enact a Reich's execution on Bavaria, although, unlike in Brunswick, there was no violence involved. Once units of the Imperial German Army were mobilized and dispatched to Munich, King Rupert, Rupert of Bavaria took the initiative and joined the side of the interventionists. <clears throat> he did not want a side, a civil war between Germany and Bavaria to take place and chose to cooperate with Schleicher's regime, even if it meant dismissing the government of Heinrich Held as State Commissar. Ludwig uh, Siebert had been appointed in Munich and held stead, and he immediately formed a nationalist right-wing cabinet loyal to the government in Berlin. As Bavaria had long since been the most powerful defender of the rights of the states in the German Empire, the destruction of its will to resist Schleicher's ambitions of a new state meant that no more challenges would come from the states. The Grand Project now has no opposition left. Fantastic. And we've got political power. We're going to press claims of St. Helena, though. The British Atlantic Islands, St. Helena and Ascension. Remained under the control of the syndicalists in the aftermath of their civil war and posed a threat to our interests in Africa. As open conflict with Britain draws near, we must consider intent to seize these islands after the Second Valkyrie. Or, oh, Second Valkyrie, uh, yeah. Yeah, why not? Two? German influence will change even higher. Eh, yeah, sure, why not? Also, I'd like to let you know, I went with professional officer corps here because I always choose overwhelming firepower. I find this one would be much better. If artillery doesn't win you battles, you're not using enough of it, so. But, given the state of what we have, we do have a professional officer corps, and I wanted something different, and it does give us better than uh, daily command power game, which we do actually kind of need. So, but overall, thank God we're doing what we're doing. <clears throat> and there goes Washington. Goodbye, Washington. Oh. Well, that's a new development for us, too. Oh, that's interesting to look at like this. A ceasefire in Africa? With the war in Africa having no end of sight, with no side of seemingly having any advantage of the field, talks begin to... Uh, Begin for a ceasefire agreement, which will follow the status quo and We'll fight on. No, we're gonna fight on. They're actually doing okay. With the Dutch Revolution, the Netherlands leaves Middle Europa. The Netherlands have severed the last of its ties with Middle Europa today. With uh, the left wing revolution of the country has pushed them to break with us in our sphere of influence. Any designs we might have had towards the country have had to be abandoned for the time being. Traitors. Terrible. The Dutch East Indies wants to settle the government here. One more monarchy has fallen to the same as syndicalism, but the Queen, and her confidence escaped the chaos to establish her resistance from the colonies that remains loyal to her. She requests to enter an alliance with us to establish a government in exile on her capital. Of course. Of course. There you go. Well, let's support the AUS, because we can. Opposition wins the Polish elections, huh? Right at the University of Warsaw, huh? August the 4th. The Social Democrat, of course. Where are we at now? With all this stuff. Can you all do this? Well, you're winning there anyway. It's Second Prussia Intervention. Syndicalists have taken over the Netherlands. <clears throat> Unfortunately. Uh, exposing a vulnerable flank through which the rural area. Uh, our primary industrial syndicate can be hit. Military hotheads are proposing what we invade right now, and while they sell like international recognition, but the Dutch, or Batavians, as they like to call themselves now, are surely dug in, having expected this move already. Others propose that we send agents to undermine the new regime's stability, which could be a more subtle way of securing their loyalty. The third possibility is just leave them alone. The direct intervention might escalate to a full-out war with the international. Send the agents, soldiers, send the border guards? Yeah, we're gonna send the soldiers. That would be a terrible idea if they were to attack and we were to not be ready, but, you know, you never know. Ah, Hawaiian royalty visits Berlin. The Hawaiian royal family has come to Berlin in order to meet with the German royal family and other noble dignitaries. They spend their day touring the sites of Berlin as well as private meetings with the political leaders of the country. The relations between the German Empire and the Kingdom of Hawaii has improved because of this visit. Aloha from Germany and a takeover of Prussia. The defeat of Bavaria allowed Schleicher to turn his eyes to Prussia, which up until now is still led by a cabinet separate from the federal one. Occasionally still clashing with the Reichskanzler's programs and reforms, of course. <clears throat> which controlled 70% of the population, territory, and industry, as long as they were one of the weaknesses of the German state with the Schleicher despised. And even before he became Reichskanzler, it stood in favor of proposals to dissolve or divide Prussia, turning into a Reichsland which would be under full control from Berlin. Uh, citing uh, a press assistant economic development or 
uh, economic decline really, and political unrest and requiring emergency measures from above, Schleicher, using the crown prince as an intermediary, successfully convinced Vail II to remove the incumbent minister president and appoint the Reichs Council to the position, reuniting them in the same way they had been prior to 1923. A snap election for the lower house of the Prussian legislature was called, which soon yielded a favorable result to the Red General. Opposition parties such as SPD and the DVLP were weakened, and a far greater number of deputies elected were those who endorsed the Reichs Council's course, whether from the DKP, Zentrum, LVP, or the right wing of the SPD. This has greatly given Schleicher the political capital necessary to consider unprecedented centralization of the empire. All of Germany shall be coordinated into one regime. And of course, Haiti Grant's docking rights. <clears throat> the I's have been dotted and the T's have been crossed following a series of back and forth discussions initiated by the Haitians themselves. Uh, a new agreement with a small island nation has been signed. Buried amidst the platitudes and legal boilerplate, Haiti's agreed to host warships. Diplomacy's bounty. To leave these guys now would probably be a terrible idea, but. That's alright. I'm gonna help out here. Well, yeah, guess you can't win there, huh? They're holding now. An appeal against escalation. As tensions grow between Germany and France, it's not the nationalistic fervor. Oh, I think I read this one last time. I'm gonna read the conference. There you go. Could we actually win against them? I wonder. <clears throat> oh, okay, so we do actually go to war with them. That means we actually do go to war with them. Interesting. Well, then we do this real quick for a second. And if we can't go to war with them, then we can't go to war with them. That's very peculiar. I don't like that. Well, that means we can get one faster group we can worry about later. That means we need way more divisions out, though. Support, equipment, and trucks. Yes. I really don't care about what the trucks are made, because it honestly it really doesn't matter. Uh, support equipment as well. Because it doesn't really matter where we buy them from. Well, we gotta get everything we need. Oh, okay. Except them. Okay, whatever. Well, that's the case. We're still gonna help our guys out here, no matter what. So you guys are headed over there. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna send you guys back. You 30 gonna hold the line here. And by 30, I mean like, actually 30. I need you 7 hold the divisions, like right here. For now. Do the best you can. You guys are going to go back against border against the Russians, because that border is gigantic and you're probably going to lose it. Just saying. I just want you to hold. My goal is to bleed out all the enemies we have, so. That really is a goal. Copenhagen Conference. It's already a small victory that Germany, Britain, and France has accepted to meet in peaceful terms. Uh, the delegation has been in Copenhagen, hosted, hosted by Christian X, <clears throat> and decided to talk to the most pressing issues between the countries and seek solutions for them. Russia sent an observer, but they denounced the negotiations themselves as a the mere ploy by Germany to pay for time. Austria, however, has enthusiastically supported the endeavor, and is represented by the charismatic Count Rickard von Kudenhof Kalergi, who has been for some time one of the leading figures upon pan-European peace movements. The German delegation is led by the star of the diplomatic service, Adolf Jörg von Mautzen, the French and British delegations are led by Leon Blum and Harold Nicholson, respectively. Despite radical differences between the respective governments and the participants, it does seem like the talks started out in good faith. The most pressing issue for Germany is the international's COVID support for, to militant socialists and Germany and their allies. This was countered by the Britain, arguing that Germany is, if not cooperating with, then at least accepting towards the Entente powers, which are openly hostile to the international. Uh, you go there, there, there. Uh, a deal was proposed which, where international withdraws support, withdraws from supporting openly violent groups in Europe and Germany restricts their cooperation trade with the Entente. In addition, both sides agree to honor the neutrality of third countries and deter any aggression towards them. Further transfers of military forces to the Franco-German border would be stopped, and a plan for possible de-escalation de -escalation of the entire border region was said to be discussed in the future. Additionally, both Britain and Germany agreed to reduce the amount of submarines and long-range strategic bombers, as long as the other party would do the same. Okay, agreement reached in uh, 
Copenhagen. After days of intense debating and multiple threats by the French delegate to walk away from the negotiations, a compromise was eventually reached. The controversial agreement was received with relief across Europe, even though very few believe it would be lasting, bring lasting peace. Still, the small step towards avoiding the looming wars is barely no step at all, so unsurprisingly. Hawks in Germany and France have denounced the treaty. The loudest voices in the DVLP have branded the German delegation as social sympathizers and traitors, and more radical forces in cynicalist politics have been un have been equally uncompromising. Yet, nonetheless, both sides have committed to at least attempt to follow the de-escalationary de measures laid out in the treaty. Surprisingly reasonable from them. Success of the Copenhagen Conference. Look at all that uh, political power we've got. Solidify control. Oh yeah, we can finally do something. Reinforce Lithuanian police. You bet we will. Surprising agreement, of course, today, uh, was reached in Copenhagen uh, after periods of intense negotiations between Germany, common France, and the Union of Britain. Uh, seeking to prevent another Valkyrie organized conference to ease tensions between the great powers under Austrian mediation, both sides agreed to limit their military buildup on the Franco German border and limit the amount of strategic bombers and subs that would be operational. In addition, the International agreed to reduce the support to revolutionary movements in Germany, while Germany promised to reduce the cooperation with the Entente powers. Russia denounced the negotiations as German attempts to pass for time and have only increased their military buildup. Peace for 1938, hopefully. Peace in our time. We've done it, my friends. Peace in our time. Well, you can t have this towel, I guess. Even though it really is not that important, but whatever. Good. Well, I guess we're going here at the Golden Throne Jubilee. Today is the day of momentous celebration. Momentous celebration. Exactly 50 years ago, today, in 1888. Our Kaiser Wilhelm II assumed the throne after the unfortunate death of his father Friedrich II. Third, the past 50 years have seen Germany become a worldwide empire and establish a hegemony throughout the, uh, Europe, all while making immense reforms at home. The Wilhelm era has been a period of great change, conflict, but also greatness. Uh, the Kaiser, nearly 80 years old and, and weakening health, has made a tour of his state empire, meeting his subjects and visiting the monarchs of the constituent states. His eldest son and heir apparent, crowned Prince Wilhelm, fulfilled much of the duties during the visits. Already the people, and government officials are expecting to be required to assume the throne soon. The preparations are slowly being made for the transfer of power and duties. Long live Kaiser the II. Fantastic. What else we got here? Marines, battlefield support. I'll probably will do battlefield support. Stega Valt expelled from Zentrum. Crisis in the brewing uh, Zentrum party. The Reich execution uh, against Bavaria has created an unbridgeable rift between Schleicher's government and the bulwark of Catholic interests. The cop between the fronts is none other than one of Schleicher's closest associates and most high-ranking Christian trade unionist, State Secretary for Labor Adam Stegewald, appointed by Schleicher in the summer of 36, but not voluntarily withdrawing from his ruling cabinet as a reaction to the intervention. Stegewald, according to his party's leadership, has silently condoned the actions of his superior, which makes him a disgrace to the Catholic community. Faced with the accusation of disloyalty to his party comrades, expulsion proceedings were initiated against Stegewald. Although media outrage is huge, exclusion should not have, mad, not have many negative consequences for media for the towering Union Titan. Despite years of attempts to finally assert his claim to leadership within Zentrum, Stegewald always emerged as a eternal runner-up at the latest since his renewed defeat at the 1936 party conference. Relations between the Christian trade unions and the rest of the party have grown colder and colder. Now entirely detached from party politics, Stegewald is finally able to be in a position to forge even closer ties between his trade unions and the Schleicher apparatus. This feature now lies entirely in the Chancellor's orbit. Those who have nothing to lose fall more softly. Second naval plan. The plans of the Great Admiral Alfred von Tepes to expand the Imperial German Navy were not completely eaten by the Valkyrie, but they proved that a strong navy is necessary for a great power. A second Valkyrie is approaches we must once again expand our former navy to meet the challenges of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Motorized self attack. Motorized, huh? Funds gain. 20%. Look at how she uses now, probably. Ah! The Wagner Doctrine, Raider Doctrine. Choose Eric Raider's vision for the Kriegsmarine, a balanced approach that upsets worldwide cooperation by combined arms carrier attacks forces. The Wegener Doctrine. Fast battleships. Ooh. Industry Werke Network. Merely declaring that existing factories must work for the Imperial German Army is not enough, we shall begin the construction of a network of state owned munition and weapons plants. And then industry work to expand the existing military and industrial complexes. Vedic expelled from the SPD. Today, the Central Committee of the SPD unanimously voted in favor of suspending the membership August, August Vinnick, an infamous member of the SPD's right wing. Uh, Vinnick had a degree of influence within the SPD during the 1920s and 30s, when he held various high ranking offices in East Prussia, a province, and he was later elected to the Reichstag. However, he also quickly diverged from the party mainstream and was described as a social imperialist. As early as 1915, uh, he belonged to the Nationalist Center, or current of the party, and these tendencies only grew after the war. 
Oh boy. In 1935, Vanning was one of the first to endorse Kofar Schlag, a Reichskanzler, citing his belief that the integration of the German workers into the national community, which referred to as the Standwerdung der Arbeitschaft, a paramount of the workforce, can only be achieved through cooperation with a progressive and nationally minded government. Subsequently, he joined Schlager's government and remains an important figure there to this day. Oh boy. Meanwhile, the SPD's long moved on from the foolish dreams of achieving economic gains for the proletariat through the Red General. As leadership now sees his authoritarian measures as actively detrimental to the socialist cause. Then his expulsion was thus seen as a natural development. Yet it marks the shift in the relationship between the Social Democrats and the Reich's Chancellor. While Venig, embittered by the expulsion, tends to attract other national minded Social Democrats and trade unionists into the National Unity Front, Schleicher no longer has any qualms with bringing down the full strength of the new state upon the SPD. The workers can only prosper through the Red General's patronage. Events on the resistance of democratic society to reforms will fire less often. Fantastic. The history of Kabushia released. Alexander Mushkowski, a leading figure in Tarawitzo Mlodokazbao, oh my god, has been working to release his project, The History of Kabushia, and snippets for the Green newspaper since 1922, and a book form since 1936. In reaction to Gazishite, Gazishist, Der Kaushubin by Friedrich Lorenz. As Lorenz's book was perceived as a history of Germanization in Kabushia, Michalski decided to highlight Kabushian nationality as Slavic by beginning his book with a short history of Slavic nationalities. He perceived that Western Slavs, including Pomeranians and Kabushians, were influenced by Western Europe, with Germans as its main influence, strengthening by Germanization. As followed by a, ge a geographical overview of Kabushia, as local groups and the historians of the nation. Later, the book presented history from legends through pagan culture, Polish rule, the rule of the, uh, the Duchy of Pomerelia under the local uh, Sobieslaw's dynasty, Teutonic rule, renewed Polish administration, and finally Prussian rule, which lasts the present day. Alexander Mzikowski didn't leave long enough to see his book published as he passed away earlier this year when it was being printed. A committee was formed, made up by the former, former colleagues, who decided to publish a book in his name alongside the novel, Zecha e Proje Ramusa? Since the release, the book was met with harsh criticism from the right, who called for the banning of the book, but has been lauded by Kabushian and liberal politicians. Is this her name Majkowski or Majkowski? Bro, couldn't freaking tell ya. We're doing alright here. Hey. Opposition criticism is the army. The two most influential opposition parties, the SPD and the LVP, have begun using the right uh, stag as a soapbox. They have an action against military spending. Both parties have pointed out that massive finance is rightfully dedicated to here and the call for reduction, which they say could be redistributed to social services or education. Supposedly and foolishly, according to them, Germany is under no threat except for uh, the threat which it creates with its uh, aggressive military. Not only that, but the SPD deputies have pointed out the supposed influence of the hair in the political uh, apparatus. <clears throat> Uh, or uh, political peers, claiming that the OHO is influencing its uncommon government. Attacks which were immediately rebutted in the parliamentary arena. How dare they attack our national, attack our national heroes? Hopefully we can win here. Hey, the special war is over. We won! Oh, it's something for peace. It's only disputes with the Ottoman Empire. No oh, crap. That sucks. Oh well. Hey, at least we won in one area. That's fantastic. Hello, what map mode did I click on? Did I click on? No, we didn't click on one of those. So, what do we got here? Got any planes? You're over there for some reason. Oh, you only said one, huh? Ah. It's fine. Do your best shoot down a lot of the enemies. That'd be fantastic if you could. Middle Europe Commission's choice of summit. Yeah, that'd be great. Financial stuff. Why not? Uh, it's not bad. There's any more arms, military arms though. What a shame. Need more naval stuff too. But like I said, we're kind of out of a lot of the stuff. So we need more support equipment and trucks. And eventually we need more arty too, because I'm going to buff up the arty. Quite a bit. 60, 60, 60. Thank you. If they don't like us. Thank you. Brazil, yes please. Thank you. And we'll support the total amount on the market. 76, yes. yes. 
Yes. Yep. And we'll do one more for now. It's gonna cost us quite a pretty penny, but that's alright. Good. Uh, are we there yet? I don't want to do things too ahead of time. But some things we will definitely have to. Maybe eight medium tanks, yes, please. Defense, speed. We do that one. 15 is not bad. Infantry attack and defense is not bad too. Eh. Well, that should give us a little slightly. There you go. Cuba wants to join a faction. Fear that the collapse of the old world order may put them on the wrong side of history. The nation of Cuba City approaches with an offer of military assistance ship. In case of global conflict breaking out, of course. <clears throat> While the contributions to the warfare will most likely be negligible, their influence in the Caribbean could prove provide some advantage to the three years of war ever reach the Western Hemisphere. Welcome to the Reich's Pact. Welcome, brothers. Feature of the Polish government, our ambassador of Warsaw has contacted Berlin in need of instructions. The German ambassadors have long since been important advisors to King August IV, and almost any government has required at least tolerance from Germany. As the elections are getting closer and victory for the pro-German MPK seems likely, the ambassadors asked him what kind of government would be most acceptable to Berlin, of course. Our uh, practices mean neither the national liberal side of the MKP or more blatantly pro-German and authoritarian statehood party inside the MKP. I wonder if we can actually cut these guys off. Our military and much of the major businesses are sympathetic towards the statehood party and Vladislaw Studniki, for obvious reasons, but more savvy political analysis and the government pointed out that the continuation of Antoni Ponikowski's liberal rule will be more stable and more acceptable to for Polish suppression, opposition, while perhaps maintaining all of our current interests in the countries despite their Polish nationalism. Nikki, can we do that one? That kind of would be great. If we could. Please and thank you. Can we actually hold here? There you go, they cut him off even harder. Oh, that was so close. Come on. Haiti and declare war the Dominican Republic. I want you to hold. No force defense here. Oh, look at this. Junkers. Production efficiency gain. Close air support. A lot of close air support, eh? Air defense. Reliability. I like reliability. There you go. Get him in there. You actually. We can circle one, two, three, four, five, six divisions. Not bad. South Tech, yeah. Keep it up. That's what you must do. More organization is good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Um, hmm. I might get rid of defraud. But just fat naval stuff is really nice. Air bases, I mean, that stuff is okay. Revolt of the totalitarians. Call it a total war. You can expend, afford expending the necessary grip of the front for this focus. Right now. Department of the New World Operations. The beginning of the American Civil War meant to the end of the Monroe Doctrine for the foreseeable future, which opens all Central and South America to direct intervention from European powers. Let us use this to our advantage and establish a separate department for operations of the New World and the Foreign Office to expand our influence. I love completely ignore the Red General, but like, stuff is very interesting to do. Incident in London. In London, new troubles brewing. This morning, another note. Uh, verbal of Arthur Horner administration that has arrived at our embassy in Carlton House Terrace and demands the immediate appearance of Ambassador Leopold von Hoesch of the British Foreign Office. 
Normally, such drastic measures are only taken in case of serious policy disagreements between two states. But in recent months, London has made use of this co tool quite often to express their disagreement with all kinds of dissident related events taking place somewhere on German soil. Accordingly, our ambassador was not very surprised when it transpired that the matter at hand was another trivial one. It turned out that recently, British counterintelligence had arrested two members of the Committee for the Restoration of Great Britain and Dover and found compromising documents on them that revealed their ties with Secret Service Abteilung Dry Bay. Of course, London is now. Demands that measures that are initiated immediately. Hush, as faced with a foreign po uh, political dilemma in practice. In principle, it's not uncommon to, nowadays for intelligence services to have opposition members to, uh, of rival states on the payroll. In uh, the syndicalist bloc has been common practice support left wing seen in Germany too, even if we have no tangible proof of this. In addition, the German Foreign Office has no control over the secret police or service, and therefore cannot be held responsible for this incident. Therefore, the British harassment, one in many in a row, seems to like, be like an act of deliberate provo provocation. Now, the following question arises, are we really willing to grant the British concessions in the name of the international detente, or is it better opinion to, or option to remain uncompromising and rebuff this audacious request? After all, no foreign country has the right to intervene in our domestic affairs. The rest of the demand is cessation of support for the CRGB, which shows your willingness to compromise. It's a farce. Hochstadt's from is one of the most renowned representatives of Germany's diplomatic corps. Leopold von Hoch always knew which words are needed in what situation to act in the Empire's best interests. After a short consultation with Berlin, he decided to rebuff London's audacious demands in a polite but determined way. Germany's supposed ties with the British dissidents have been dismissed as uh, regrettable but legal ventures by private individuals, and the alleged links of the captured Apostolatoria to Abteilung Drei B are uh, bogus. Naturally, London is enraged by the reaction, but in no position to do anything against it. Using such a minor incident with questionable proof to provoke an open conflict would ruin the reputation of the syndicalist bloc on the global stage, especially considering that they have been complicit of similar deeds in the past. We have demonstrated our integrity and determination for another time, but willing to concede to this act of obvious and deliberate provocation. Foreign political doves may disagree with this assessment, and it will surely be overwhelming the cabinet with countless angry memoranda. As Bismarck said, we will become the anvil if we do nothing to become the hammer. The Empire of Ethiopia requests a military mission. The Empire of Ethiopia. Brought more closely into the German fold since Middle Africa brought, bought our shares in DKAEB, Royal Road 36, and they are now requesting a German military mission to modernize their army. If they are victorious in the upcoming war against the Somali foes, they may even join the Reich's Pact. Ah, fantastic, come on out. Mm. Political power is nice. Ah, they are spots organization. Germany was forged by war, but um, a great power through war must never forget war. We shall foster new German militarism. Our tool for this goal, goal is a Wehrsport, military sport, uh, a state-owned paramilitary organization which will rally the German youth to participate in sports, military training, patriotic rallies, and give them a sense of purpose. Rimsma Affäre. A lengthy investigation by the police of the Kingdom of Prussia and the Reich Treasury has confirmed that the Rizma, one of the largest cigarette manufacturers in the German Empire, has been using consistent political pressure to, in order to bypass numerous laws against hostile acquisition of opposing cigarette brands and avoid tobacco taxes in numerous member states of the Empire. The sons of uh, the company's founder, Bernard Hermann and Philipp Rimsta, transformed into an impressively profitable enterprise since his death. It appears that it was done through illicit deeds, though. What is highly concerning to the Treasury is that this is not the first time that Rinsma has fallen under suspicion by the federal authorities. An investigation into the tax evasion was first initiated in 1926, but it was discontinued, and a similar investigation in 1932 ended up in the same way. Government officials suspect that this was, too, the result of the political pressure, perhaps connections of friends in high places or levels of government. Continue the investigation, we must know the truth. Well, that sucks for them. Uh, but we're doing okay, we're actually trying to push in and help out the uh, Bulgarians as much as we possibly can, and we've taken Bucharest. Fantastic. Keep beating them for now. Because we got them on the run. Oh my god, they actually took out a couple divisions themselves. Good job, guys. Thanks for not completely blowing yourselves up. Uh, I don't want to lose any divisions, so we're just going to take as much as many tiles as possible for now. We're doing quite alright. And we've been in a circle, of course. Uh, but in the meantime, you guys are up there, of course, like we said earlier. And you're still training as much as you possibly can. Spain's looking good. Uh, this is a little concerning. They're attacking like absolute animals now. Which I'm kind of, kind of okay with. Uh, we're still with the Fronde, which is fine, whatever. Uh, assume... Uh, oh, Poland's on stable. My military setbacks might set it off. Authoritarian democracy. Honestly, that might be really worth doing. But I think we're going to partial mold. Build, build the crap out of everything you have right now. I need you to go right here. I need you to not worry about that. And just in case, we're going to do this. And now as you're getting attacked, that's not ideal, but you might be able to break him out, maybe. 
I knew they'd get it in circle eventually. Oh, terrible. I know. What we got here? Got more divisions. Yeah, you're gonna need quite a few divisions on there, but this at this time I'm gonna do that right there. And what else we got right here? Armor, speed. Ooh, speed would be nice, but we're gonna max out that armor as much as possible for now. Okay, I need you go up here too. We gotta save that division, no matter what happens. Oh, can intervenes in the American Civil War. Well, good luck. Not really our place to be right now. What is this? Uh, Max, you know, why not? I think agility's better, technically, but whatever. Oh, thank God, we got him. Oh, boy. Okay, so at least we got them. The Bulgarians are holding out very fiercely, which is actually really cool. Finally, to see them doing okay. Did he actually win there? You know what? Better not test our chances. Well, if we're going to attack... You probably win if you do that. We do have a couple ginseng tea to keep us nice and warm, though. Uh, do we have anything here we can do? Infantry? Sure, why not? Can we send him any more planes? No, we can't. That's actually kind of surprising, not gonna lie. We've defeated most of the enemy planes, which is pretty good, but still. A Barzinji insurrection, huh? Well, alright. Have fun with that. Yeah, I almost won anyways, that's fine, whatever. Russia expels the Polish ambassador. Oh boy. Mere days after Vladislav Studniki was appointed Prime Minister of Poland, there was an unexpected occurrence in Moscow. The Russians expelled the Polish embassy there, exporting their allies, diplomats, to be recalled back to Warsaw. The response is not yet unexpected, yet even the Poles were taken back by the severity of the mood, just as we were. For years, a far-right Polish exile group, the Polish National Committee, had resided in Moscow and has attempted to influence the homeland's politics from abroad. While Russia does not recognize the group, it has been funded by government officials and the Kremlin, who have found a common cause in their anti-German direction. It comes as no surprise then. Then Studniki's appointment has greatly angered Moscow, overwhelmingly pro-German and anti-Russian. There is little doubt that Studniki's cabinet will seek to crack down on nationalist movements in Poland, accusing them to be foreign agents of the National Committee. In a statement justifying the expulsion of the Polish diplomats, the Russian foreign minister referred to Studniki's appointment as an unfriendly gesture towards Russia and an affront to Polish national sovereignty, encouraged by German military and industrial interests. Our attempt to summon the Russian ambassador was refused. The audacity of such a move cannot be understated. Just ten years ago, Moscow's dissatisfaction would never be so fierce and open. Times have certainly changed, but as time goes on, it seems conflict with Russia is only becoming more inevitable. How dare they intervene in the affairs of our allies? Like, we didn't interfere, but whatever. We're not going to tell them that. Alright, so at this point, um, I want to do one heck of a blow to them. I think if we do this, and circle destroy, I think we'd be okay by doing that. I, you must help them out there. Right there. Uh, you might actually be able to hop out here. No? Okay, no. You're doing it by yourself. Okay, then. Hop out right there. Pass the cylinders. Nice. As we're inching ever closer to 1939. Oh boy. That is some hot tea. Range. Speed. I like them fast. Get in there, too. If anything, going across the water would probably be for the best. Oh, come on. Nicaragua wants to increase ties. The Nicaraguan government. Our ambassador has recently come to us with a deal. In an attempt to increase or escape American influence, at least. <clears throat> uh, they want to open up new trade deals with the country. Uh, along with diplomatic ties. Like this investment could bring numerous advantages in the future with a variety of cash crops in Nicaragua being, mainly being exported to us instead of the United States. Yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Good. So we have the military oversight of the state governorships. Very good. Some more population, too. Uh, we still need to do a lot of stuff here. Holy cow. Ooh, that'd be pretty good. Political power gain. Ooh, available is political power. Ooh. National defense team. The Wehrmacht. Conscription law cost. Uh, what do we need? The Fronde. The Front unites desperate factions with seek a totalitarian transformation of the hair. From improving the psychology of the common soldier through national propaganda and devotion to total mobilization of all national resources for war. Technology serves the will of the German people. It should be used for unrestrained destruction of the enemy. Somewhere here, we gotta get across the river at least. Fault the Oh! What happened? Do they actually lose? Report on a disappearance. Oh, I think we're this one before, so we this one, please go ahead. Whoops. So in the end, we did lose, but, you know, whatever. Hey, we held up for way longer than I thought we would. How are we doing in Italy? Are you actually attacking? Please don't just start. Oh, no, now we're getting attacked. Okay. Well, Bulgaria lost, which really sucks. We spent so long with that. 
Uh, big sad. Oh well. Lots of military factories. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. We need some tungsten. Uh, sure, for now. Naval budgetary request from Flanders Valonia. In order to better prepare their southern border against a cynical threat, the government of uh, Flanders Valonia has requested that we loosen uh, some of the military restrictions imposed on them, which would allow them to better guard the North Sea. Yeah, of course. How are we looking over here? Doing all right? Doing all right? Because with our soldiers, we threw on one artillery, which is not bad, but we need more. <clears throat> Five take front takes over in Germany. Oh, discovery of nuclear fission. Uh, Bulgaria leaves Middle Europa. Bulgaria suffered the last of its sadly Middle Europa today. The left-wing revolution in the country has pushed them to break with us and our sphere of influence. Any designs we might have had towards the country have to be a better for the time being. Well, that sucks. The Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Chemistry has reported that their scientists, led by Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann, have confirmed the existence of a phenomenon which has been suspected by the physicist and chemist community for years, but presumed to be only a hypothesis, nuclear fission. After bombarding uranium atoms with neutrons, they discovered that ur uranium nuclei were successfully split and produced barium atoms. It took a while for the team to confirm that, that what they saw was not mere contamination. Hahn and Strassmann eventually coined the term Uranspaltung, uranium fission, to describe this phenomenon. So may pay the way. To new technology, should the presumably enormous energy released by nuclear fission be contained in Eureka. How much artillery are we missing? Quite a bit. Workers clash with far-right activists. Activists. A protest organized by trade unions and socialist youth against our government today ended unceremoniously, as instead a brawl broke out between them and a counter-protest organized by far-right parties, specifically two small yet visible movements, gathered their combatants and agitators to com Front their left wing opponents, the extremist and erratic racial supremacists, the German Volkisch Party, the uh, Deutsche Volkisch Partei, and the extra parliamentary, Seven Kist and National Socialist German Socialist Party, Deutsche Sozialistische Partei, led by Arthur Dinter and Julius Steicher, respectively. They hold little influence on the electoral stage, but they are disproportionately represented among veterans and far right students. We took to the streets to clash with the trade unionists. No deaths reported, but a few people were wounded before the police arrived at the scene and dispersed both sides. Syndicalism. Guys, God. Ugh, that, that sucks. We fought so long and hard for what? Keep building up our roads, too. Uh, right on. Yes. We're definitely gonna need that. Oh, hello. Spanish Republic. De Fronde. The late stages of the Valkyrie proved that the wars of the future will be nothing like the past. They'll require total mobilization of a state's resources in order to rally the largest military force they possibly can and outlast their opponent. As such, Germany can only win the next war if it follows the principles of the letter, the Fronde, an antiquated term meaning the revolt. Renew has two smaller factions with similar goals, the psychologists and the Volksarmee. They're hardline militants of a far-right ideological outlook who seek to improve the psychology of the German soldier, and establish a people's army, a highly nationalistic and ideologized military which encompasses all of German society. Ludwig Beck, Joachim von Stupnagel, and Werner von Blomberg are the main ideologues, while their spiritual grandfather is General Max Bauer, one of Erich Ludendorff's closest colleagues and the ideologue of his Ludendorff dictatorship. Though not all of them are on good terms with Schleicher, his ambitions is transforming the German Empire into an authoritarian regime guided by the army aligned with the Defront. As such, they're natural allies. On board for total war! Establish a Wehrmacht. Call it total uh, war. <clears throat> Expend. Enable one time ability to spend a large amount of equipment for a grand counteroffensive. Operation Cheat. Remove vectors of the Valkyrie. Ooh. That'd be nice. Nationalistic or nationalist indoctrination. Naval doctors would be nice too. Form the Brabag. Motorized artillery attack and speed. Toad artillery. Soft attack. That'd be nice. Naval stuff. Organized cartelization of the economy is completed. You get stuff. LLC too. Huh. Well, we still have other stuff to do around here too. Remote transatlantic trade. Every allied non subject country in the Americas will grant us two opt out cities and receive dividends in exchange. The growth of German influence in the New World opens lucrative opportunities for both sides. Our business cannot wait to sell its dozens of millions uh, of South American citizens, or sell to them. It will fulfill their hopes by easing transatlantic trade through agreements and deals. Hungary so do not do anything. Goring implicated in a Rimsma scandal. Careful analysis of declared and undeclared income. 
uh, as well as investigation into the activities of Rimstma brothers during the 1931 to 1932 time frame has confirmed that they staved off corruption investigations due to the connections of the DVLP's member of the Reichstag, Hermann Goring. Goring, a Valkyrie flying ace, was forced into retirement in 1928 after a series of conflicts with the AS false leadership, with affairs coming to light and him openly flaunting his support for the far right. The DVLP came to the defense of the slandered war hero, and the Goring subsequently ran as a candidate in the 1931 elections, winning the only Bavarian constituency for the party in Nuremberg. And the Reichstag. Goring generally stayed in the background, largely irrelevant in the party's activities, but used his new status for personal enrichment. Large donations from Rimsma allowed him to fund an extravagant lifestyle, requiring a hunting lodge and purchasing numerous artworks. In retrospect, it should not have been that hard to guess that this God's uh, gold façade life was financed through bribery. The nationwide outrage is enormous, and even Goring's old allies are forced to distance themselves from him. The former ace defended himself to the best of his ability and declared this to be a Judeo Marxist slander, but ultimately chose to resign. The courts will now decide his fame, and they will not be kind. A stain on the honor of the party of Turkmets and the Luftreich Kräfte. As in these middle Europa, as in several last of its stats of middle Europa today, the government has chosen to leave our sphere of influence, excited the exploitative nature of the customs union. Any designs we might have had, had towards the country, have to be better for the time being, of course. How are you guys doing? And got the. Uh, Gotthard Henrici, how are you? Becoming an infantry leader, mountaineer, hell's fighter. That's why we send you. The Spanish Republic wants to join the Reichspact, as they should. A telegram has been received from the Spanish Republic with a request from the leadership to join the Reichspact. Despite the great devastation the nation suffered as a result of their civil war, many of the people still wish to aid us in the conflicts, and their nation geographically is still in a very strategic position. A decision must be made on how to respond to this request. Nah. Of course, why would we want them? Artie, please. One? Probably not one. Anti air. Well, it looks like no one really has that much arty, do they? Do that. Uh, do that. Literally just to fill our orders. Because obviously we can't build it up right now. Oh! The future of the army. Negotiate the federal states. Increase the grip. Drum up motivation of the Reichstag. Draft new threats, assessment studies. Promote Venom von Blumbug. Lose 25 command power, huh? Oh, promote Joachim, Joachim von Stülpnagel. It's not bad. We'll do both. 70%. Hey, now we can spend some of that stuff. Nice. Hey, man, we're just here trying to promote trade. That's all we're doing. Uprising in Poland. It turns out. The Poles have arranged a massive protest against the king and his royal government. This mass movement of workers and peasants has encouraged protests and strikes in nearly every Polish city, and their rhetoric is increasingly hostile towards us and the king. While they have yet to fire out their first shot, we have no, no guarantee of their peaceful intentions. After all, there are many socialist travel routers among them. Even worse, the protests have spread to the Prussian side of the border as well, culminating in the peasants' march to pose him. Though this is surely just bravado, Warsaw is asking us for guidance, and should it come to it, our military assistance. Send the reinforcements, Mr. Rob will not overthrow Hohenzollern. Or in the desert. Nice. <clears throat> there you go. Very nice. How we doing down here? Doing all right. The Great Syrian Revolt. You know, in the meantime, these guys aren't fantastic. But they're doing alright. I'm gonna give them some engineers. Give them some support artillery. Give them some normal artillery, too. You know what? Beef them up a little more. Yeah, look at Kurdistan. Nice. <clears throat> so, I heard this before. If you don't need this, please go ahead. Everyone hates the Ottoman Empire. Everyone hates them. They might just hate themselves too, but still. Middle Europa Commission uh, Summit Choice of Agenda. Industry Advisors. Arms Experts. Next one, huh? War scare. Two events have shaken the uh, German press this week. First, an incident on the heavily fortified Franco-German border, in which a few French soldiers wandered into the German soil and turned back after stern warning. Second, an article in the 
Kuroi Zeitung, by General Ludwig Beck, which assessed the staggering growth of the Russian and Syndicalist armies in size and quality of material, which has gone after uh, to warn that both of the revisionist powers may be ready for another world war sooner than we expected. Though few in the German Empire believe that Paris and Moscow will be content with the post valkyrie order, most civilian politicians assume that the Imperial German Army, invincible on the battlefield, would deter any invasion. Since 1936, economic downturn and political conflict has caused Germany to withdraw deeper into internal affairs, a break which our enemies used to close the gap masterfully. Our hegemony across Europe seems invulnerable, but is it really? We already have enough on our plate. The economic crisis caused by Black Monday and the political conflict has left us unprepared for another war. Military reform and industrial expansion should soften the blow, but it'll happen regardless. What is this? The world appears to be headed towards the second bell creek. For the time window closing, we must hastily begin preparations for remilitarization and expansion of our military industry. While the Rex Act passes an act which orders our civilian uh, industry to move to war footing. Deutsche Reichsbahn nationalizes our railways, military railways, and completely focuses extend rifle testing and huh, develops self propelled artillery. These five decisions in the industrial projects decision category has been changed. Oh, whoops. Oh, crap. Deutsche Reichsbahn. Oh, so we need this one next, maybe. Wahlproof 2 is infantry section of the Hales of Offenland, in which dealt with research, development, and testing and adoption of infantry kits. We must open contest for modern hand infantry kits and begin testing new and improved rifles, which will give us an edge in firefights and skirmishes. I'll find this hour if you about that, please go ahead. What a childish fantasy. Return to the Polish German military mission. The officers of the military mission in Poland have returned to Germany. Hans Guderian and Wolfgang von Kries, before being the most noteworthy ones, they have spent the last years in the Polish People's Republic as military advisors and organizers for the King August IV. It's largely their achievements that the Polish army boasts being the best disciplined force out of our Eastern Slavic allies now. The work is done and complete, and Guderian is offering services to the following once more. Bill Coleman. Is that good? Oh, New York City, yeah, yeah, that's good. There you go. Cover as much and as fast as you possibly can. The Declaration of the Republic of Poland. Catastrophe struck at the House of Hohenzollern. A revolution in Poland has overthrown King August IV and declared a republic led by peasants. Made to see the revolution is a massive blow to the German prestige. A no doubt increase the rest of the East, making less us look weak in front of the Russians. And even further humiliation, the new world Polish Republic is Austrian backed and may soon join their sphere. The Oxford government are calling for a bold move. The restoration of the monarchy through force of arms? Even. More pragmatic statesmen do admit there would be a waste of effort to prop up another unpopular monarchy in Poland, but their new government could be coerced to accept all the same treaties as the Kingdom have. Perhaps we all see as lenient sorts of Poles, winning some hard needed assistance there and support there. They're willing to negotiate, huh? Hmm. At this point, obviously, we're not going social democratic, but. But what do we want for a puppet? And we have this, and that's good and all, but like. What do we do this? Put some extreme pressure on them. <clears throat> well, Detroit. Goodbye, Detroit. Looks like the, sounds like the Reds aren't doing so well. You still need way more arty. Uh, basic medium tanks. How much do I really want to invest in tanks right now? I don't want to slow them down at all. Small armaments, approved small cannon. It's fine for now. Radio, approved. Special modules. More reliability is always good. Field drum, machine guns. Sloped armor, don't really have to have that. Eleven cost thirteen loaded armor. It does increase hardness though, but for the cost, I like hundred percent reliability. There you go. Need some of that too. Let's see what happens. Still more less a little bit more, which is good. Kind 
God, everyone hates the Ottoman Empire. Let's go with those. What else do you have here? Oh. There we go. Bullage, Poland pledged lo loyalty to Germany. After visiting some of the most treaties between our two nations, a solid legal basis for a new relationship has been built. The Republic of Poland shall keep most of the old status quo, but they will be granted wider autonomy in the name of respecting Polish democratic institutions. In turn, they will continue being a German military ally and will help out any and all economic treaties with Germany and German corporate and private actors. Alright, keep your Republic of being so much to you. You think they can spin the face of the Holland's of Holland's Army consequences? Fine, I'll take that one. Oh, they go Syria. Well, it is Syria, whatever. Just put all your divisions on the border with them. God, I hope we'll be ready for this war. I don't think we will. There you go. Welcome back. God, Republicanism? What's wrong with these people? I would like to solidify control, but we're getting ready to go to oh, what, war. Oh. I don't like this. 20%, that's a lot. Ooh. Joachim von Stupnagel. That'd be good, too. Wait, there's always someone with this. Oh, von Blomberg. Oh, darn it. Well, I guess we'll wait to get von Brauschit. Brauschit. Armenian uprising. Good God. Does everyone hate you, Ottoman Empire? I'd like to send you stuff to help you out, but I don't really care that much. Good God, they just want to butcher their own men. Well, they are reds, what do you expect? Buying time with spies. There you go. See what you can do. So for this one. So we'll get that one done. In the industrial projects decision category, Deutsche Reichsbahn, national railways, military railways. Is it up here what we need to do? No, national railways is right here. Ever since the unification of Germany, the railways of the empire have been divided between several road companies controlled by the states, fostering inefficiency and internal competition. In the name of the national interest, we shall put an end to this division, and all railway companies will be united into one Deutsche Reichsbahn. Nationalize the railways, huh? I don't think we'll get this done one day anyways. Yeah. Mm, let's get this stuff done first. What do we got here? Thank you. And we need one more, Sita Burma. Thank you very much. Alright, so what do people want? Some planes, we need more than this. Just not feeling prepared for the war, am I? Not at all. As long as I can hold the line, that's all I really care about. That's all I really want is just to hold the line. We need more Artie too. Everybody got Artie? Oh look at this. There's a lot of Artie. Good. Uh nope. Good. Let me just buy all the art that we need. 286. Nope. Social Democrat criticism of uh, Reichstag. Uh, I think I might have read this before, so if you're about this, please go ahead. That sucks. But first. Yeah, artillery is going to be more important. Yeah, they are just... How much have you learned? Baklusha is learning. Henrici, still learning. My god. 
Toilet's looking a little better. Guns are fine. Tanks are okay. Uh, Panzer divisions. Yeah, no. Maintenance companies, definitely. That's fine. Slightly more armor on those guys. Uh, infantry are looking all right. We're probably going to need some anti-air. Do we have any anti-air? No, we're not making any anti-air. Of course not. We only have 25 factories, for the love of God. <clears throat> mm, top attack. It's good. I like the bonuses you get. Re better recovery rate, heart attack, soft attack, support anti-tank. Anti-tank might be really beneficial too to do. I like these guys though. Good hospitals, better, more HP. You can hit a bunch. Why not? Victory in Africa. Oh, German colonial forces in Middle Africa managed to defeat the Portuguese army. Finally, look at them. And occupy vast amounts of territory in the Portuguese colonies. Now, they have decided to try to settle the matter in a peace agreement which we've been asked to draft. While many of the colonial officers would like to annex vast swaths of land from the Portuguese and incorporate into Middle Africa, uh, others call for restraint. Arguing that adding such a large amount of territory to the already faltering Middle African administration will bring nothing but trouble, and that the main objective of the agreement would be to take the territory needed to secure against any future threats to Middle Africa, but nothing more. During Mozambique, all of Mozambique. Adding such a large use of territory to the already unstable Middle African administration might prove to be pushing past its breaking point. Eh, yeah, why not? They can deal with it. Look at that. That looks fantastic. Does that not look awesome? That looks awesome. I'm all about border gore and maybe hopefully they'll lock it up, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, why not? I just want to be able to hold against everybody. And over good. Get those roads done too. But industrial decisions, like. Infrastructure development? Let's do this one next, maybe? Because I don't know if we have to do this one, but still. Oh, we'll do it anyways. It's better. We're definitely not going to be ready for the Valkyrie, are we? It's not good. One division is not enough to be holding here. Um, one leave, huh? How's the Eastern looking? We do have our own allies, but like it's not enough. British operatives. Yeah. Yeah, I read this one before too. If you read this one, please go ahead too. So, God dang, we so much already sound funny. Plenty of anti air though. Uh, hello. Well, that's not good. Naval bombers, fighters. What do you guys have? Naval bombers. Not doing too much there. Kind of hanging out. That's fine. Yeah, we're definitely not ready for this war. God. Landers declare war on the Belarusian People's Republic. Oh. Fall of Hong Kong. Hmm. 
No, so he just drove there, huh? Cool. Uh, but then yes, the nominations for the 1940 Nobel Prize in Literature is already in the Nobel Prize Committee, and among them is an unexpected name, Abelum Storos, more commonly known by the name of Vedunyas. Vedunyas is a spiritual leader of the Prussian Lithuanian community, a member of the Theosophist, Theosophist Society, is a poet, a philosopher, as well as a noted preserver of local traditions, folklore, and songs, and even their ancient pre-Christian faith, which is sought to rebuild and redeem. His moral influence among shrinking Lithuanian-speaking population in East Prussia is unquestioned, and has even made a name for himself on the other side of the Mimelam, and the Kingdom of Lithuania, where his works are right inside it, of course. He has garnered respect among German intellectuals as well, although his minority status and focus leaves him relatively unknown. Still, the news were not, was met warmly in Berlin, who enjoy with Tilsa, and though his victory is not assured at all, making, merely making Vidunias into consideration, it's a significant accomplishment for the Prussian Lithuanians. The only point of attention is a possible clash between him and the aristocratic Prussian establishment. A considerable portion of Vidunia's work is dedicated to the conquest and colonization of Prussia by the Teutonic Knights, and the destruction of local culture and way of life that this process caused, as not only Prussia, but arguably the empire itself originates, for the territories gained from the Ossidium. This has gone the right-wing press to derive the poet as unpatriotic. Neither the Sturmfest nor Edversvaken. Russia is a large realm and rules over many territories whose population is not too fond of the Eastern Albion overlords. While these opponents of Prussian rule can mostly be found in the distant periphery of the empire, some of the most large uh, regional patriots, in fact, do not live too far away from the capital, the Lower Saxons, who inhabit the Prussian province of Hanover, the Duchy of Brunswick, the Principality of Schumburg, Lipp, and the Grand Duchy of Oldenburg. While similar to the Prussians of faith and dialect, they have a strong regional identity that reaches, reaches back thousands of years, and Hanover Hanoverians have a deep disdain for the Prussians due to the annexation of the kingdom back in 66, manifested among others in the existence of the Guth Party whose main aim is the restoration of the sovereign kingdom of Hanover within the empire. Lower Saxon patriotism, however, is not confined to the DHP, but also has a strong extra-parliamentary presence, most prominently the Lower Saxon homeland league. The oldest German regionalist movement it invokes an even older image of the flat and marshy territories between Elbe and Ems, celebrating the medieval spirit of the Saxon kingdom that bravely asserted itself against the Romans, Franks, and Stauffers, and embraces illustrious leaders such as Arminius, Duke Windukind, and Henry the Lion, famous scientists like Leibniz and Gauss, and acclaimed writers such as Emma Lutens, Wilhelm Busch and Hoffmann von Fallersleben. However, although local patriotism is in the far northwest is strong, it was never strong enough to actually actively resist Prussian rule, as petty rivalries have plagued the Lower Saxon movement for decades. The official song of the Lower Saxons does not even include the lands west of the Weser. A Protestant Hase does not have much in common with the Catholic Emslande, and the Oldenburgers are so proud of their Grand Duchy that they will keep a certain distance to their brethren on the other side of the border. Annually, the Homeland League convenes the so-called Lower Saxon Day to foster local identity and celebrate the common history, but one thing is certain, as long as the Prussians control most of the region, the Lower Saxons remain a spiritually divided people. As long as they squabble, they'll remain under the Prussian boot. Simple as that. As we nationalize the railways, we need to figure out what we're going to do here next. But I think we'll end the episode there. This has gone long enough. And in the next episode, we'll go to war. Uh, probably with the Reds. They'll go to war with us. We'll be on the defense. We'll try to defend against the Russians, which... Good God, we just don't have enough divisions for everything, do we? Hopefully the Russians will be fighting the Japanese at the same time, but there's no guarantee for that. And maybe we'll have the Ottomans come in. Of course, we do have our Eastern... Europe allies, but is that really a lot? But hey, if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we're going to probably struggle a lot against all of our enemies. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.